grounds is where, you know, like for instance, we're going to go to Haiti here in the next, we'll probably go for a recon in the next few weeks and we'll go for doing something in the next few months. We're getting our ducks in a row. Uh, but there is a situation where it's a dire need, it's a desperation almost, and we'll go and try to do the best we can and we'll fail. We won't do, we won't solve the problems of Haiti, but we'll make a contribution probably and we'll learn something because in my opinion, the whole world is like Haiti. We, we can focus on Haiti because it just happened there and there are people dying and dead and, and injured and homeless and so on, but that's true all over the planet. Haiti, to me, I was saying to somebody yesterday, is like, you know, the, the world is a, is a cancer and Haiti is a sore that has developed on that cancer. I mean, it's all the same. It's happening all over the world all the time anyway. Haiti is just a focal spot. Chile is another one. You know, when there's an immediate thing where 200,000 people die instantly, well, that does bring the attention there. But slowly that'll fade and we'll go right back to the fact that the entire world is a big problem anyway. But Haiti and Chile and places like that, and there are quite a few others, Africa, are giving us a little forum to try where uh, to try out uh, things in, in that, that because of the desperation, they will be allowed to be tried out. But really, they should be allowed to be tried out everywhere because there is, we're in a desperate, a desperate situation on this planet. And uh, so we're, we're looking to uh, take these concepts into a realm where with a few hundred bucks in your pocket, you can, uh, you can find this kind of living. Because believe me, uh, living this way, I'm finding out, you know, I've seen it, I've been working with this for 40 years. I live in them, I have some that I can't afford to live in, like the Phoenix, but I can visit here and hang out here, and I've got people that stay here uh, as a nightly rental or whatever, uh, guests or whatever, and what I'm seeing is this is the way to live. I mean, uh, you know, like I say, a, hundred, uh, I mean, uh, a foot of snow outside, uh, a storm just came, it's going to be really cold tonight. It's going to be toasty in here. Uh, it's gonna, they're going to have plenty of power because the sun's reflecting off the snow, and that even makes the solar panels produce more. So we're going to have a ton of electricity. Uh, the snow is melting because it's a sunny day, and water's running into the cisterns. Uh, the contained rubber, rubber lined botanical cells are, are uh, containing the sewage and the gray water and making these plants grow. And of course there's recycled materials throughout and we're getting food. There's bananas, there's grapes. Before I sat down here to start talking, I was grazing. You know, I was eating a few cherry tomatoes and a few uh, greens and uh, it's pretty amazing to live this way. And, it, and it, certainly the wealthy can afford it if they had the brains to choose it. And certainly uh, the middle class, class people can afford it, and uh, even people that don't have much money can get bank loans and buy cars and homes. But that's still a small percentage of the people on the planet. There's a lot of people on the planet, and they deserve it too. And actually, the people that can, do stretch for a three hundred or a four hundred thousand dollar loan, they have to give up their life. So we're looking at adding a few more ingredients to this six point Earthship package. And one of them is kind of an attack on the, on the grip that economy has on our life. And we're making some headway. And like I say, the, the concept that we're playing with is village ecologies. I'll be talking about it a little bit, but uh, uh, we may uh, not cover it all. We do have a part of it uh, talked about on our website at earthship.com. So given those kind of uh, pre-thoughts here, uh, there's a couple of things to talk about in terms of how people get started doing this. Uh, and it has to do with money and time. Uh, but before that, let me make another point. Uh, on our website, for sure, we've got uh, a map uh, that's ongoing and being developed that we call the Pockets of Freedom map. And I am, I am, we just sort of, this concept of pockets of freedom came out in a conversation uh, and we latched onto it because it's 
it's pretty relevant. Uh, it turns out that in, in recent history, let's say, I'll bring up two examples here. One is a guy that came through and he had an oxygen tank on his back because he has a heart condition and he was having to breathe oxygen, so he's pretty old. And he wanted to build an earthship, and I'm saying, well, this guy's pretty old to be starting an earthship, but more power to him. And he uh, uh, chose a design, and we worked up the design, and it, you know, he's not, he wasn't a pauper, he wasn't poor, so we were able to customize a little bit, and, and he did get a, not a super expensive custom design, but it was somewhat custom, and could have been built and ready to go. Well, he ran into the Pima, Cara, uh, Pima County, Arizona uh, regulations, and they are, they are one of the worst that I've run into. There's three or four counties in this country that I would just say move <laughs> if you live there. It's, it's too hard to get a home there, no matter what method of construction you're using. But anyway, I hear they're trying to go green and make it easier, but it wasn't easy for him. The point here being, I watched this guy fight probably almost two years for a permit. I watched stacks and stacks of paperwork come through his desk and mine and changes and 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 moving the changing the design and watering it down and in a, in the long run making it seriously more expensive and more time consuming. But the guy prevailed. He finally got a permit. The house is being built right now. I think they they have a website and everything and I'm impressed with this guy. Um, because he stuck to it no matter how old he was and he fought and he was tenacious and he finally got a permit after two years. Well, now that's thrilling. Uh, here we are, the world is going down the tubes and uh, climate-wise and population-wise and what he got was two years of work to build a carbon zero home and it probably won't be quite carbon zero now because they made him put in all kinds of backup and everything else and they made it cost literally twice if not three times what it should have cost and he went through the stress and didn't die from it and more power to him but that's the point why why does that have to happen i have another one in florida they fought through and it took, maybe it took them not quite as long but again a year and a half or so if not close to two years they finally got a permit they're finally up and running and of course they in my opinion their design is watered down and made clearly made more expensive. So um, here we are, we've studied for 40 years, and what we're seeing is that they get in these general, uh, general regulation areas, uh, they are just watered down. They are made more expensive, they are held up. We need a situation where anything that is professing to be uh, 90% are more carbon zero. We should just say, okay, red carpet this permit, let them go, make them sign off. Yeah, make them sign off uh, that, that they may be taking some risks, you know, because they're not following the exact code. The codes have evolved and evolved over the years. Lots of it is due to lawsuits. Somebody does a gray water system that stinks in Colorado and they sell the home to somebody else and the people don't like it and sue the county. And that happened. They sue the county. So the county tightens up their regulations. This kind of stuff goes on. It's not any one person's fault. It's not Obama's fault. It's not the previous president's fault. It's not the legislator's fault. It's all of our faults because we live in a society where if something goes wrong, you sue them. And that causes a whole new level of paranoia and makes the codes and regulations be more of a noose around our neck as we try to evolve here into the necessities for the future on this planet. And so that's what I'm seeing uh, is going on. And the same thing happened with the Florida situation as, as with the uh, uh, Pima County, Arizona situation. It is happening. There's a big hoopla about it on the websites. Uh, uh, it is actually happening. And a, a, a big, uh, I think they have a website and everything's going on. In my opinion, it's way too expensive and took too long. Now, compare that to uh, at the same time, we're all of this time, we're working on getting kind of a generic cut and dry design that does it, that's efficient, that you can stamp out like Chevy Nova's, that uh, is tried and true and proven. And we got it, it's the global model earthship.